my biggest question is about all that is how did something come from nothing? Well, they have that whole thing with like the amoeba or whatever, the paramecium. Well, those, like, those are life forms. That's how things they think started, though. But I'm saying the, that's the biggest question, though. Like, how can we come from nothing? Well, so I would say this: the Einstein's laws of conservation of mass and energy said that you can only like move stuff around. You can convert energy to mass, or you can take a little bit and combine it in different ways. But you can't create more mass. You can't get mass from nothing. So, so where does it come from, though? So the the core philosophy is in the beginning, according to science, physics, everything. There should be nothing at all. There's no reason to have anything. There's no reason that we have any energy or mass. According to physics, what should happen is we should have nothing at all. Not even blackness, not even empty space, but nada. I don't, so, I don't understand that. I think people just, like, they just go too hardcore into things and try to, like, nitpick at everything. But I, that's a fun part. That's no, fun that makes people more life. paranoid. But why are you paranoid about that? Because I don't want to die. I still got things to do. I got zombies to kill here in, like, a month. <laughs> oh yeah, I forgot we aren't going to be alive for too much longer. But uh, that's the big thing anyway. for sure. And um, and that's what uh, like even the Big Bang doesn't explain. They say that you know matter or energy exploded and it converted in matter and all these elementary but particles. Why? Yeah. Not only why, but it, where did that initial crap come from that could explode? Maybe the dinosaurs did it. I hear crickets. Is that, is that a yes? <laughs> Maybe the Big Bang was when you fell in the shower. Oh, that was scary. That Zing! <laughs> Wait, actually, I was actually thinking about this the other day. And, well, never mind. Falling in the shower? But, uh, <laughs> oh boy. Listen, want to hear my theory? I have an alternative theory. To, it's going to be stupid, but yes. theory of No, the it's not, no, not the Big Bang, but of how it's possible. And here's what I say. And it has to, and another thing. This Sense is, of research came to this conclusion? Yes, my okay. scientific research. Okay, and, looked on Google. <laughs> no, you won't find this on Google, I assure you. <laughs> and um, here's another thing that even though they got that large Hadron Collider in there, you know, throwing particles together and exploding them and see if they could find like a core particle that yeah. makes up all – because of, earlier on, I keep getting tracked, but I'll start my story here. People thought that everything was made of these small things called atoms, and that's what like atom means, like invisible or something. And then later we figured out that they're made of like protons and neutrons and electrons. And then we found out that protons and neutrons are made of these smaller things, hard quarks. And it seems like it's going to keep going on and on. And they're looking for like the core particle right now, and that's what they're hoping to find. Yeah, the Higgs boson or whatever. But even the, even though they found all the particles. And they can like kind of explain electromagnetic forces and how chemicals bind. They can't. They don't even have like the slightest idea of how gravity works. Because you can calculate the exact path of the Earth, and you could say that if two things, the more massive they are, there's a relationship on how much they pull each other. But there's no reason why two things of mass pulled. It. And Einstein, you know, he pretty much came up with a theory of of space time. It was called, and it, it was pretty much a really elegant equation and he like nailed it down it's pretty much a good formula to predict how things move but in he like kind of gave his theory but he never said why it happened there really aren't any good theories and um so i was thinking I that there's a way this. to explain this yes please and, uh, <laughs> this also explains not only the mystery of gravity ladies and gentlemen oh, this, my is, this is this is huge this is historical what's about to happen not only one of the biggest mysteries in physics, the mystery of gravity, which there is no reason for, but also everyone the real I answer. Will, I will also explain to you guys how we can get something from nothing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's called being invisible and going to the strip club and you can see it all for free. And I'm going to need your imaginations a little bit on here, but I think I'm going to get through. Okay, now, be like I said before, according to science and physics... Everything what should be starts with nothing, not empty space, not, you know, the universe is empty, nothing, zero. So that's our starting point. How can we get something from zero, nothing? nothing. Well, the only way that you can have zero and get something, get matter, is mathematically here I'm talking because, you know, I don't, I didn't, I don't want to claim that I found a particle or anything. The only way that you can have nothing, zero, and something at the same time is to have negative something as well. If you have one and negative one, you can combine them and still get zero. 
still be left with nothing. So that's what I think everything is. Right now, this is nothing. The You can take nothing and split it up into one, which is matter, that's something. The one is something you can hold, matter, you can touch, you can feel, and negative one. Kind of like neutrons, and then you have electrons and Well, all those are, are matter, and those are all ones, different kinds of ones combined in different kinds of ways. Because once you have this happening in different ways, you get a lot of ones, a lot of negative ones. Ones can combine to form twos, threes, fours. You can you know, do anything you want with matter. Forms quarks, protons, neutrons, electrons. However, with a negative one, well, let me say this first. This will make sense. Now, you started with nothing, zero, empty space. Now, if you have one, we'll say it's a marshmallow. How big is the universe going to be to hold this? Well, the size, if you had a bag, the size of one marshmallow. If you had two, which you can have two and still have nothing, how big would the universe be? Well, it would be the size of two somethings, two marshmallows. So you can keep this going on and on and on and still have mass that keeps going and going, but still at a core have nothing. So that is how we have mass and the universe is expanding. We know that accelerating at a rate. So you can still have mass yet have nothing. But the question is, what's the nothing in this? The marshmallow? No, that's something. That's the ones. That's the matter. The one is matter. Now, what about the negative ones? Are there just n where is that crap? Well, what I think is, if you think about this, you have all of these marshmallows, and they're expanding and they're forming space and matter, right? Well, what's the force that wants to take it all away? Well, if you had a negative one, you would take a marshmallow away. The universe would collapse or contract. Well, if you took another marshmallow away with another negative one, it would collapse instead of adding more stuff. So what I think is, what would happen if you had an abundance of negative ones and ones? Well, it would collapse and collapse and collapse, and it would eventually be sucked in to less than nothing, where if you were to take an outside marshmallow and throw it in, it would just suck it into nothing. And that sounds like the opposite of the expanding universe is something, a force that's pulling it in, and that would be gravity. So that's what I think nothing you can have split into matter which forces the universe to expand and anti i don't want to say anti-matter because that they already named something that but the force that destroys matter or sucks it in or wants it to be nothing and once you have a lot of these then what can happen is it sucks it all in and that's why we have gravity because it always wants to balance out to nothing zero nothing it makes sense and that's the answer to everything <laughs> How is that then to get us some physical to go to the strip club, though? You'll find out. Oh, my God. It's a good theory to make s'mores. Yeah. Oh, no, I heard something about marshmallows and going to the strip club. Doesn't that make sense, though? No. How? Nice try, Einstein. All right. How other, what other way can you get something from nothing? Come over with the cloak to make yourself invisible <laughs> and go to the strip club for free. Why don't we just – why did not you just go to the strip club – Listen, with Tim's theory, you could rob a bank, get the money, yeah, and go to strip club for other days you except see one a day. There's a serious bag coming out. You're not going to find that suspicious? Hey, hey there's a bag going. What if someone, <laughs> where way. are you going to go in the strip club where like no one touches you or anything like that? Private area where you get to get lap dances. And listen, someone's going to sit on you and they're going to be like, what the hell is no, that? I go behind coming? her and you start party boying her. In, in your thing, it works for you're going to have one day. It's going to be an awesome day. You're going to get to jerk off in a strip club. But, Tim, at least he has money. He can go to strip clubs for club. multiple days. No, no, no. And he doesn't have to. You don't have money because there's no feasible way to get out there without getting stabbed. They can't stab me. I'm nothing. Those I'm the marshmallow the taken away. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess I'll end it on that No, A marshmallow taken away. And I guess we will have to save these questions for another time, ladies and gentlemen. So, thank you for your insight about jerking off in a strip club. <laughs> and, Tim, your, you know, theories about pooping and being embarrassed and whatnot. And you guys also learned about the theory of the universe. I solved all the solved. riddles of physics. Consider it solved. So, anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed that podcast. And we'll see you guys later.